ברוכתה יהוה אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר קידשנו במצוותיו וצוונו על ספירת האומר היום יום שתיים. בלסר אוי יהוה אלוהו הקינג אוף יוניברס וסנטיפייד אס וויט קומונדמנטס וקומונד אס תקאם תאומר און דיס דה סקנד דיי. אמן. Thank you, Abba Father, as we continue to read the book of Jeremiah, Yeremiahu. And we are in chapter 3, and tonight we will read chapter 3 and chapter 4. If a man puts away his wife, and she goes after him, and becomes another man's, does he return to her again? Would not that land be made greatly unclean? But you have committed whoring with many lovers. And would you return, and would you return to me, declares Yahuwah. Lift up your eyes to the bare heights and see, where have you not lain with men besides the ways? You have sat for them like an Arabian in the wilderness, and you made the land unclean with your whoring and your evil. Therefore, the showers have been withheld, and there has been no latter rain. You have a horse forehead, you refuse to be ashamed. Shall you not from now on cry to me, my father, you are the guide of my youth? Does one bear a grudge forever? Does one keep it in the end? See, you have spoken and done the evils that you could. And Yahuwah said to me, in the days of Yoshiyahu, the sovereign, have you seen what backsliding Israel has done. She has gone up on every high mountain and under every green tree and there committed whoring. You see, why does the Father say black backsliding Israel? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, when, the, when they split, Judah stayed in the south mm -hmm. with um, Jeroboam and Israel went with Jeroboam up north. Mm. And so at the end of the day, Israel was the one that went more and more astray because of the fact that if we take, for example, what happened with um, Jezebel and um, Ahab, by that time, why did Elijah raise up? Elijah had to raise up to speak to the house of Israel because they were worshipping the prophets of Baal. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly where we are today. And after she had done all these, I said, return to me. But she did not return. And her treacherous sister Yehuda saw it. And I saw that for all the causes for which backsliding Israel had committed adultery, I put her away and gave her a certificate of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Yehuda did not fear, but went and committed whoring too. So here we see... Father gave Israel a letter of divorce, and that is why it's so important for us to understand in Hosea chapter 2, that what does the father do? In Hosea chapter 2, he gets Hosea to marry a prostitute that is going to be symbolic of the prostitute of the house of Israel. So now he, he, he goes and he wants to bring back, he brings back treacherous Israel. He puts all these Hedge, he hedges her in after she's gone, after all her lovers, hedges her in to bring her back. So you see, the father at the end of the day wants to bring back treacherous, he wants to bring back backsliding Israel. But yet Judah, that were the faithful ones, that were supposed to be faithful, was even more treacherous than sister, than her sister. And it came to be through her frivolous whoring that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and wood. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister, Yehuda, has not turned to me with all her heart, but falsely declares Yehuda. And is this not where the Jewish people are today? They have returned back to him, but falsely. They, they, they keep all these things as an outward manifestation. So they do all these things. They keep the feast, they keep the Sabbath, they keep all these things. But then when the Sabbath is finished... They go and they commit all these atrocities on the land. They will con the, the men, they commit adultery and they, they are treacherous within their hearts. So it's all an, an outward manifestation because at the end of the day, their hearts are doing this falsely. And Yahuwah said to me, backsliding Israel has shown herself more righteous 
than treacherous Judah. And isn't it amazing? Because today, who are the ones that are truly returning back to the Father, truly keeping his ways in spirit and in truth? It's Israel. They are the ones that the Father's opening their eyes and bringing them back. Go and proclaim these words towards the north and say, Return, O backsliding Israel. Declare, declares Yahuwah, I shall not look on you in displeasure, for I am lovingly committed, declares Yahuwah, and I do not bear a grudge forever. Only acknowledge your crookedness, because you have transgressed against Yahuwah, your Lua, and have scattered your ways to strangers under every green tree, and you have not obeyed my voice. Now you see, this is exactly where we are today, and this is exactly what it is with the house of Israel, because backsliding house of Israel has done what? She's gone and transgressed her way, she's gone and scattered herself, and she's gone and scattered her ways to strangers. We've learned the ways of strangers. We have not learned the ways of Yahuwah. And we do not obey his voice, which means we do not obey his instructions, declares Yahuwah. Return, O backsliding children, declares Yahuwah, for I shall rule over you and shall take you, one from a city and two from a clan, and shall bring you to Zion. Amen. So what is he doing? He's bringing us back. But you see, is there many that's coming back? He says, and I shall take you, one from a city, two from a clan. So you see, there's not many coming back. This is a few. They scattered. They scattered around the nations. And the Father's handpicking because you must make the decision to want to return. You see, Father presents us. It's like I was explaining earlier. Father presents this to you because there's nobody that comes back to the ways of Torah that don't truly love the Father. Those who truly love the Father, Father will bring them the way of truth of the Torah. But you know what? Many are called. So he calls us all to come to these truths because we truly love him. But then we must choose to follow in the path. And I shall give you shepherds according to my heart. And they shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. So you see, Father wants to give us true shepherds. Shepherds that walk according to what is in his heart. They hear the Father and they do what the Father tells them to do. And they will feed you with knowledge and understanding. They will feed you with that knowledge and understanding that comes from Abba Yahuwah's heart. And it shall be when you have increased and shall be fruitful in the land in those days, declares Yahuwah, that they no longer say, the ark of the covenant of Yahuwah, neither would it be, neither would it come to heart, nor would they remember it, nor would they visit it, nor would it be made again. Understand, it's not to be made again. Because why? He is the one that wants to become the presence of the ark. We don't need an ark anymore because why? He is the one that is going to be able to, for us to dwell with him in his presence. He tore the veil so that now we may enter in. And at that time, Jerusalem shall be called the throne of Yahuwah and all the nations shall be gathered to it, to the name of Yahuwah, to Jerusalem, and no longer walk after the stubbornness of their evil heart. So you see, what was it when the flood came? Why did the flood came? Because each man went after the stubbornness of what was in their mind, in their hearts. They went astray. They did their own thing. This is what they did. And now the Father is saying, when he finally brings us back, we will have one shepherd. And the shepherds that he gives us is shepherds that's bringing his heart to the people. And they will no longer follow the stubbornness of their own evil ways and their own evil hearts. But they will all be of one heart, of one accord, with one shepherd, Yeshua HaMashiach. And the message is one message to return back to your and then we will be able to be gathered together in the name of Yahuwah in Jerusalem. In those days, the house of Yehuda shall go to the house of Israel and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given as an inheritance to their fathers. So you see, this is still coming because at the end of the day, right now in the land of Israel, which ones are the only ones that are dwelling there? It's only the, 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 the so-called Judah that is dwelling in the land, those who can prove their Jewishness, they are the only ones that live in the land. The house of Israel 
are not allowed to return back because they've got to prove that they're Jewish and to be Jewish means you've got to be able to be part of a religion. And so we're no longer part of that religion. And so we're not able to return. But the father says that the day is coming when Yehuda and the house of Israel. So what did we declare tonight? We declared Ezekiel chapter 37, the dry bones, where the one house is going to come together and the one house is going to return because this is what the father is doing. He's going to speak over those dry bones. He's going to raise up those dry bones. He's going to put sinew on them. He's going to put meat on them. He's going to raise up this house of Israel that will be one house that will be able to return back to the land of their fathers. But I said, how would I put you among the children and give you a pleasant land and a splendid inheritance of the hosts of the nations, of the host of nations? And I said, call me my father and do not turn away from me. So you see, what is he saying? Call me my father, do not turn away from me. The father is calling us to be able to call back, to come back to him. But indeed, as a wife betrays her husband, so have you betrayed me, O house of Israel, declares Yahuwah. Why is this so important to us as being those that are in the dispersion? Because we are those that are of the house of Israel that moved away from him, that moved away from his commands, that moved away from his statutes and his ordinances. And so we, as the house of Israel, we betrayed him by no longer following him in his ways. But what has he done? He's given us Yahushua, who became he said, I came for the lost tribes of the house of Israel. So Yahushua came now in order to do what? To bring us back, to graft us back into the house of Israel. To graft us back into him. And to be able to win. We are grafted into him. We are grafted into the original covenant that was given on Mount Sinai. Mm. For his people. And we too are part of those people. And so therefore we must repent and say, Father, forgive us. So as we read through this book, it's a repentance to say, forgive us, Abba, because as an unfaithful wife, we have betrayed you and we have gone our own way, but now we are coming back. A voice was heard on the bare, bare heights, weeping supplications of the children of Israel because they, they have perverted their way. They have forgotten Yahuwah their Lua. And so understand, we receive your Shua, but yet we still do not want to return back to the house. Now remember the prodigal son. The prodigal son went out into where? He went out into the nations. He took his inheritance. He said, Father, give me my inheritance. I see that as we receive your Shua, but now what do we do? We go out into the nations. We are in the nations and we squander the inheritance and the day will come when we land up in the pigsty amongst the pigs and we say, what have we done? We need to return back to, the, to our father because why? In the father's house is the father's rules. So when the prodigal son comes back, the prodigal son comes back to be able to say, I have the inheritance of Messiah Yeshua, but I need to come back to the, to the um, covenant of the rules of my father. Return, O backsliding children, I shall make your backsliding cease. See, we have come to you, for you are Yahuwah our Lua. Truly delusion comes from the high hills, and noisy throng on the mountains. Truly, in Yahuwah our Lua is the deliverance of Israel. So you see, only in Yahuwah is there truly going to be the deliverance of Israel? Because the Father has given us Yeshua. Yeshua said, I came for the lost tribes of the house of Israel. That is the biggest love story. The biggest love story is that through Yeshua, through us receiving Yeshua, if we don't stay just at Jesus, but if we move past the outer court and we come into the holy place and we start looking to the table of showbread, we start learning the truth, we start walking in spirit and in truth, then we come back to being restored to the holy of holies, which is the place where we need to commune with the Father. Mm. For shame has devoured the labor of our fathers from our youth, their flock and their herds, their sons and their daughters. We shall lie down in our shame while our reproach covers us for we have sinned against Yahuwah our Lua, and we and our fathers from our youth, even to this day, and have not obeyed the voice of Yahuwah our Lua. 
So you see, we are supposed to be obeying his voice, that which he commanded us already in, in, when we were in, in the Exodus. When we were in Exodus, he was teaching us his ways and he wanted us to be able to return back to him. But we have not obeyed the voice of Allah. Why? Because we have now think we receive Yahushua, and, but we don't need to return back to the Father. But in the Holy of Holies is where the Father speaks to us. Chapter 4. If you do return, O Israel, declares Yahuwah. So you see how important it is that this needs to be able to be given to Israel. Because we are those that are Israel. When you read this, you put yourself there. Because we are Israel. Because we are the ones that went astray into the nations. We are the house of Israel. We are the adulterous house of Israel. We are the house of Israel that has gone whoring after other lovers. We are that prodigal son that was living in the father's house, received Yeshua, but yet went astray. And this is why father is now wanting to be able to bring us to a place of where we return back to him. And that is why we can come and repent and say, Father, forgive us for what we have done. And shall swear as Yahuwah lives in truth, in right ruling, and in righteousness. So you see, we need to come back into what? Into truth, in right ruling, and in righteousness. Then nations shall bless themselves in him, and they shall boast in him. For this is what Yahuwah said to the men of Yehudah and Yerushalayim. Break up your Tillable ground and do not sow among thorns. Circumcise yourselves unto Yahuwah and take away the foreskin of your hearts. So do you see what is the covenant that we come into now? The circumcision that we need to come into now is the circumcision of the foreskin of the heart. Because the heart is callous. That's why he comes and writes his Torah now on the tablets of our heart. It's no longer written on tablets of stone, but on the tablets of our heart. You men of Yehudan, inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my wrath come forth like fire and burn with none to quench it because of the evil of your deeds. So you see, Yehuda has circumcised their foreskin. But where's the circumcision of the heart? And this is what the father has today against the house of Judah. Is he says, you circumcise your, your foreskin and you, you are the covenant people of the circumcision of the flesh. But yet at the end of the day, your hearts are wicked before me because you have not circumcised your hearts. So they do all these outward manifestations, but their hearts are wicked before the father. And that's Judah now. Declare in Judah and let it be heard in Jerusalem and say, blow a shofar in the land, cry aloud and say, gather yourselves and let us go into the walled city. Lift up the banner towards Zion. Be strong, do not stand still, for I am bringing evil from the north and great destruction. So you see, now he needed to bring evil against Judah because they prided themselves. Understand, Israel just went astray, but Judah prided themselves that they had the covenant with the father they were the covenant keeping people that was the covenant of the foreskin but not the foreskin of the heart and he's saying you have a covenant with me but yet you don't follow me the ways that i have said that you should follow and this is exactly where we are today we have we've received your sure but yet at the end of the day we still want to go our own way so we receive the jesus and we think because we've got jesus we've got everything but that's not what it is a lion has come up from his bush and the destroyer of the nations is on his way. He has set out from his place to make your land a ruin. Your cities are laid waste without inhabitants. So you see, eventually, that land is going to become destructive. It's going to be destroyed because of, the, of them going astray. For this gird yourself with sackcloth, lament, and wail. For burning displeasure of Yahuwah has not turned back from us. So you see... The indignation is there, and that is why he wants us to repent, because we constantly still keep going astray. And in that day it shall be, declares Yahuwah, that the heart of the sovereign shall perish, and the heart of the heads, and the priests shall be astonished, and the prophets wonder, because Father is going to have his way. Mm -hmm. Then I said, O Master Yahuwah, truly you have greatly deceived this people, and Jerusalem, saying, Peace is for you, whereas the sword reaches the heart. Mm. 
So you see, this is exactly where we are today. The prophets will say it's peace. The prophets will say it's peace, peace, because we all have, we are all children of the Most High. But yet at the end of the, the day, what does he say? A sword reaches the heart because the Father wants the heart of the people. And that's why he needs to bring the sword because without bringing the sword, the hearts will not humble before the Father. And that time, at that time, it shall be said to this people and to Jerusalem. A scourging wind of the bare heights blow in the wilderness towards the, the daughter of my people, not to fan or to cleanse. A wind too strong for this shall come to me. Now it is I who speak judgments against them. So you see, when the father speaks the judgments, it shall be what he says he will do. See, he comes up like clouds. And his chariot with a whirlwind, his horses shall be swifter than eagles. Woe to us, for we shall be ravaged. O Jerusalem, wash your heart from evil and be saved. So you see, we need to cleanse our hearts from all the evil so that we can be saved. Till when would your wicked thoughts remain within you? So guess what's the problem? It's not just our deeds, it's our thoughts. He's judging the thoughts of the people. What did he say in Genesis where he says their thoughts were evil continually? And why did he bring the judgment? Because their thoughts were evil continually. For a voice is declaring from Dan and is proclaiming trouble from Mount Ephraim. Announce to the nations, look, Proclaim against Jerusalem that besiegers are coming from a distant land and raise their voice against the cities of Yehuda. Like keepers of a field, they are against her all around because she has rebelled against me, declares Yahuwah. Your ways and your deeds have brought this upon you. Listen carefully. What is going to bring the destruction upon us? Your ways and your deeds have brought this upon you. So if the people do not repent... Our ways and our deeds are going to bring the judgments upon us. This is your evil because it is bitter, because it has reached into your heart. So do you see? It's the heart that is wicked above all things because he looks at the heart of man. Oh my, so you see, if we can do all those outward manifestations and we go to church and we read the Bible and we do our little prayer groups and we have our little prayer meetings and we do all these little outward manifestations, but what is in our hearts? Does our hearts truly humble before him and repent and turn from our wicked ways and serve him? Oh, my inward part. My inward parts, I'm in pain. Oh, the walls of my heart. My heart pounds in me. I am not silent. For you have heard, O oh my being, a voice of a shofar, a shout of battle. Destruction upon destruction is cried, for all the land is ravaged. Suddenly, my tents are ravished, my curtains in a moment. How long shall I see a banner and hear a voice of a shofar? You see, the, show, the voice of the shofar is busy uh, sounding. How many people all of a sudden are now starting to raise up, blow the shofar, blow the shofar, the shofar sound is, is sounding, the shofar sound is sounding. Creation understands the shofar sound, but is man listening to the shofar sound? For my people are foolish. They have not known me. So you see, they pride themselves in that they know me. To know me is to yada. To perceive, recognize, understand, become acquainted with him as a husband and a, a wife. But yet they show that they know me. How do you say that you know him and you do not keep his commands? They are stupid children and they have no understanding. So you see, understanding comes with knowing. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. Why? Because the fullness of the Ruach is not there. Because we cannot have knowledge and we do not have wisdom. Why? Because we do not fear him. I looked at the earth and saw it was formless and empty. And the heavens, they had no light. I looked at the mountains and saw they shook and all the hills were swaying. So you see, this is coming. Do you see? This is coming. He's going to shake the heavens and the earth. Once more, I will shake the heavens and the earth. Once more, I'm going to shake these things 
I'm going to shake it. Why? Because I want to read from 2 John. I'm just going to read 1 John chapter 2 from verse 6. The one who says from verse 3, by this we know that we know him. So for you to understand today, if you say, I know him. So most Christians will say, oh, but I know him. I know him. Listen to what it means to know him. And by this we know that we know him if we guard his commands. Mm -hmm. The one who says, I know him and does not guard his commands is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever guards his word, truly the love of the Lord has been perfected in him. But by this we know that we are in him. The one who says he stays in him or to himself also walk even as he walked. So how can you say, I know Messiah, I know Abba Yahuwah, but you don't even walk as he walked. You don't keep what he kept. You kept. You don't walk. You don't eat like he, he, he ate. You don't do the things that he did. But yet you say that you know him. But yet you don't even keep his commands. But yet you pride yourself in saying that you know him. So look at what he says. And he says, because you say that you know me. And he says, look at the mountains. Verse 24. And saw they shook and all the hills were swaying. I looked and saw there was no man and all the birds of the heavens had fled. I looked and I saw the garden land was a wilderness and all its cities were broken down at the presence of Yahuwah by his burning displeasure. So do you see? He's going to bring the judgment by his burning displeasure because he's going to shake the heavens and the earth. As it says in, in Haggai chapter 2, where he said, once again, I will shake the heavens and the earth. The glory of the latter temple will be greater than the former, because the silver is mine, the, the silver is mine and the gold is mine. For thus says Yahuwah, all the earth shall be a ruin, but I shall make a complete end. But I shall not make a complete end. On account of this, let the earth mourn, and the heavens above be dark, because I have spoken, because I have purposed, and shall not relent, nor do I turn back from it. All the city is fleeing from the noise of the horsemen and the bowmen. <laughs> so understand, this is, the, this is the, the, the horses that are coming. The red horse, the, black, the white horse, the, the, the red horse, the black horse, the pale horse. You see, the city is fleeing from the noise of the horsemen and the bowmen. They shall go into bushes and climb on the rocks. All the city is forsaken and no one is dwelling in it. And when you are ravaged, when you are ravaged, what would you do? Though you put on crimson, though you adorn yourself with ornaments of gold, though you enlarge your eyes with your paint, there you go. You see, enlarging your eyes with your paint, the makeup that we put on, you beautify yourselves in vain. You lovers, your lovers despise you. They seek your life. For I have heard a voice as of a woman in labor, the distress as of her who brings forth her first child, the voice of the daughter of Zion, she bewails herself. She spreads out her hands, saying, Woe to me, for my being faints because of killers. So this is what is coming. So we praise Abba Father as we finish this chapter 4, chapter 3 and chapter 4, and then tomorrow we do only chapter 5, and then from there we will read only one chapter every day. So may Abba bless you all. Shalom.